For the avid road runner, Koros has the pace too. And for the extreme outdoor ultra endurance athlete, Koros has the vertex too. But what if you run some roads and some trails and you need mapping but don't plan on scaling Kilimanjaro anytime soon? This is the Apex 2 and the Apex 2 Pro. And they might be exactly what you're looking for. Yo, what's going on everybody? My name is Kopuzi, and I'm a road owner who focuses mainly on the marathon and half marathon distance, but I do occasionally get out onto the trails and need some mapping. And today I'm gonna to talk to you guys from my perspective about the Apex 2 and the Apex 2 Pro. And I'm also gonna talk a little bit about this new little thing, the Koros Pod. Too. But before I give you my thoughts on these devices, I do want to go over some disclosures. All these devices were provided on loan from Koros for the purpose of review. So they're not paying me to make this video or to use any of the devices. And after this review is done, I'm going to be sending all these devices back to Koros. And no one is going to get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before this video goes up on YouTube. So with those disclosures out of the way, let's talk about the Koros Apex 2 and Apex 2 Pro. These are two GPS running watches that have all the sensors that you would expect to do the things that you would expect a GPS running watch to do. It could give you your GPS location and a tracing for where you've gone running. And from that, it can give you your pace and distance. And it also can track your heart rate, the elevation that you've gone up and down during your run and all sorts of other daily activity tracking that you might wanna do. It has a lot of different sport options that you can use to record your activities, but mainly I'm gonna be focusing today on the running. Now what sets these apart from other watches on the market is that they have really reliable power from the wrist so you don't need a separate foot pod to be able to get running power numbers. This is something that I think is available across the entire line at Koros now uh, but it's something that is continued here in Apex 2 and Apex 2 Pro. Now what sets these two watches apart from the other Koros watches primarily is going to be the mapping. So the Pace 2 is a fantastic watch that I reviewed earlier earlier this year, but the main downfall for that watch for me was that it didn't have mapping. The other thing that sets it apart is that this is not quite as kind of robust and rugged as the Vertex 2, which is kind of on the other end of the spectrum from the Pace 2 in the Koros lineup, but it does have some of those luxury features that the Pace 2 kind of skimps on in an effort to come in at a more aggressive price. For the Apex 2 and the Apex 2 Pro, you're now dealing with a titanium case and sapphire glass, so it definitely is a noticeable upgrades. It feels a lot better. It does add a little bit of weight to the watch, but certainly whether you're looking at the Apex 2 or the Apex 2 Pro, you feel like you're dealing with a much more luxury experience, a much more premium experience. It just feels like a much better watch to have on. The big difference between these two in terms of what's the difference between the 2 and the 2 Pro, it really comes down to size, battery life, and that GPS mapping. So the Apex 2 is 1.2 inch diameter screen where the 2 Pro is a 1.3 diameter screen. The Apex 2 Pro also has a much bigger battery and the Apex 2 Pro is dual band versus the single band that's in the Apex 2. Two, the idea with going dual band is that you're gonna get even more accurate GPS tracing, especially when you have difficult GPS tracing conditions. Like for example, if you're under an overpass or in between some very tall buildings in an urban environment. Next, let's talk about what it's like to actually live with these two watches and what they're like, apart from what the paper specs are going to tell us. Like I mentioned, they're fantastic watches to wear. I really enjoy that they have a uh, Velcro strap option. One thing that I would do is kind of reverse the way that the Velcro goes. Well, the way it comes from Koros, you kind of cinch it the other way, uh, but I always flip that around so that way when I am cinching down the Velcro and I'm pulling it tight so that way I can have it high on the wrist and get a good heart rate signal. When I pull it tight, it then moves the watch face towards me, whereas the way that they have it, it moves the watch face away from you and I always feel like that's kind of like backwards and doesn't make sense. So I always flip around the way that the, the band goes and that's really easy to do because they've got quick release clasps in there. The band is nice and comfortable and as I mentioned earlier, they just feel fantastic to have the watches on. I'm not the biggest guy out there and I have pretty small wrist. So I actually prefer the size and weight of the Apex 2 over the Apex 2 Pro. The Apex 2 Pro just feels a little bit 
heavier to me, whereas the Apex 2 kind of gets on my wrist, I feel it, it feels nice, and then it kind of just disappears, and I don't really notice the weight at all. So I prefer the size and weight of the Apex 2 over the Apex 2 Pro. Now, in terms of battery life, there are differences there. Now, for the Apex 2, I was able to get about six days between charges, so almost a week, but it was a heavy week where I had over 11 hours of GPS tracking in that time. I also did have some time on the bike, which I'm not sure uh, counts in terms of GPS tracking in terms of the battery drain, but it does also increase the amount of like heart rate tracking that it also does. Now, in comparison, the Apex 2 Pro with its bigger battery gave me about 11 days of usage, so well over a week and a half and over 14 and a half hours of GPS tracking. In terms of real world usage, both as a watch that I need for my day to day, but as a GPS tracking device as well, these watches both can go a very long time in between charges. So even for the longest weekend trips with the most rigorous GPS tracking, you're not going to need to bring the extra charger along with you as long as you've got a full charge before you go. It's got other nice tweaks that I've seen also in the Pace 2 uh, that are carried through to the Apex line as well. Things that I love that Coros does, like find my phone or find my watch. So whether you've lost either one, you can use the app on the phone to find the watch or you can use the watch to find your phone. I tend to lose both of those things all the time. So each of those features is something that I use regularly when I have these watches. It also does a really great job of sending workouts that you could structure either on the app, on your phone, or from a desktop and send that really easily to the watch. That way, when you're out there doing those workouts, you just get the workout started and then the watch tells you when to run hard, when to recover, and then when to cool down as well. All of that stuff works out really well. And I think that, oh, of the variety of brands of watches that I've tested, I feel like kind of the haptic engine that buzzes on the Coral watches do the best job of actually telling me when I need to change what I'm doing, whether it's running too fast or not fast enough within the intended uh, pace or effort zone, and when the next kind of uh, portion of the workout is coming up. A lot of other watches, the thing might buzz, but I just don't notice it, so I've gotta be a little bit more aware of what's going on uh, on the watch. The one downside of the Apex series is that it does have sleep tracking, but it's not like the best sleep tracking. I really wish that it would take a look at my heart rate variability overnight. There is a way to kind of like run a test so you could like sit still and kind of like uh, measure your heart rate variability on demand. But I really wish that there was a way that it would automatically measure that while I'm sleeping. A lot of other brands are doing that these days. And I feel like it's kind of a miss that Coros doesn't have that, at least not yet, uh, as one of the feature offerings for the Apex line. Now let's take a look at some more specific testing that I did with the Apex 2 Pro and the Apex 2. I wore the Apex 2 Pro as I ran the New York City Marathon recently, and I felt like that would be a really good test of how this watch would fare with its dual band GPS under some tough conditions. And I feel like the parts where it struggled are the places where I still felt like uh, I wish it could have done better, but I understand that it had a hard time. The main parts were when I was undercover. So going over both the Verrazano Bridge and the Queensboro Bridge, those are areas where you're literally covered by more concrete and steel, and it can be hard for the satellites to get a signal down to where you are. And so that's where I felt like the watches struggled the most. For the most part, I felt like it did a really good job. I manually lapped uh, for most of the miles that I ran on this race, and I felt like it was always within like a couple hundredths of a mile by the time that I actually hit the lap button and I got to the next mile marker. And I think that probably sometimes it was accurate as I was having a lot of fun at the New York City Marathon and a lot of times I was just kind of weaving all over the course. So the Apex 2 Pro was probably giving me a very accurate measurement of how far I was actually running compared to the distance in between the mile markers on the course. And in this sense, the Apex 2 Pro is probably the most accurate GPS running watch that I've ever worn during a marathon. Now for the Apex 2, I did a lot of testing with this on the workouts leading up to the New York City Marathon. It's lightweight enough that it doesn't feel heavy on the wrist and I could really cinch it down and because it's lightweight and not that big, I feel like it stays put so I'm getting accurate heart rate measurements from all the workouts that I'm doing. I also did a lot of my mapping testing and navigation testing with the Apex 
too. And I felt like while I do kind of wish sometimes that there was turn by turn navigation, like telling me like when I need to make that turn to the left or to the right, for the most part, a lot of the times when I'm using mapping, it's not when I'm on a city grid, it's when I'm in a trail. And a lot of times like turn by turn navigation doesn't really work even on watches that have it. So it's not a feature that I'm missing incredibly. Overall, I'm just happy that the mapping feature is there. So that way it gives me a sense of where I'm going and it also lets me know how much of the run I have left. So while I don't need maps every day, especially times when I'm traveling or I'm on trails that I'm not quite as familiar with, it's always really appreciated to have good mapping and navigation like that's available on the Coros Apex 2 and the Coros Apex 2 Pro. So overall, I feel like both of these watches gave me really reliable data. They feel fantastic to wear and the battery life is excellent. The only one gripe that I have about these watches is that sometimes, and this is a problem that I've experienced with a couple of Coros watches now, sometimes I feel like the response is a bit laggy. And I'm not necessarily just talking about going through the interface and the menus. I'm talking about when there's a pace change, like if I'm going from a recovery jog all of a sudden now to running at threshold pace in a workout, or if it's a situation where I'm going downhill and then uphill and the pace has changed, I feel like this watch takes a really long time to really pick up and register that change. I'm not sure why, but the Coros watches always seem to be a little bit laggy. If you've come around a sharp turn, gone up a hill, or I'm coming down a hill suddenly, that's when I feel like it takes a little bit for that watch to respond and the reading that you see right away might not actually reflect what you're doing in that moment. But that's where this new weird Coros Pod 2 comes into play. Now, the reason why I call it weird is because when I think about a foot pod, I'm very familiar with the Stride foot pod. I've run thousands of miles in Stride foot pods. And that is a device that I use to help with difficult GPS conditions and give me more accurate pace and data information. Now, the Coros Pod 2 is supposed to give better GPS pace and distance information, but you're not actually getting any power numbers from this pod itself. All the power numbers are still coming from the wrist, which in some ways makes sense because all Coros watches now have power from the wrist, so you don't need to be getting it from the pod. Instead, what the pod does is it makes the lagginess less apparent or it kind of eliminates some of the lagginess. So what I think is what's happening, and I haven't talked to any engineers about it to confirm, but I think what's happening is the lagginess that may be intentionally designed into Coros watches in order to kind of hopefully remove any aberrations in quick changes in pace that might not be accurate because maybe the GPS signal is pinging around back and forth. It can kind of like double check against the foot pod and if the foot pod is saying like no we actually are moving very quickly all of a sudden then it kind of gives you updated information a little bit more quickly and so i think that's what's going on here and so it's supposed to give you a little bit better gps information because i think it's a way of kind of like not necessarily helping triangulate your actual location but i think as a way of kind of like helping the watch to eliminate any false information that it might be getting does that make sense? I think that's what's happening here. And so that's really what this pod does is it makes the Coro swatch faster. And I feel like that's an interesting thing that you can do. And I'm glad that it, there's a device to help that. But it also makes me think, why should I have to pay $100 extra for this device? Can't they just make the watch do that itself? I, I just, it feels like an admission that this watch isn't as good as it should be. Now, the one area though that it does kind of make sense to me uh, is if you're gonna get onto the treadmill uh, and use it for something like Zwift. So I've been able to do a little bit of testing on that. We recently got a treadmill for the house. Uh, and so uh, the way that this works with your Coros watch and with Zwift is actually really quite nice and quite seamless. So once this is paired to your watch, you do an indoor run and then you set it in the settings to virtual run. And then all of a sudden the foot pod is talking to the watch and it's sending that all to Zwift. So that way your Zwift avatar is running very accurately and you're getting accurate data up on the screen. So that way you can use Zwift. I did also compare it against the Stride foot pod and the numbers that I'm getting are not exactly the same. So there does seem to be a little bit of a difference. I never really know if the treadmill's off or the foot pod's off or the watch is off or which one it is. Although I always tend to believe that the treadmill is going to be the least accurate source of information. But the Pod 2 and the Stride po foot pod are relatively close in terms of the data that they're giving. And so I feel like 
the, either one is going to be a good way for you to be able to get onto Zwift. Or if you just wanna have more accurate data, say for example, if you are someone that goes to a gym and you might be hopping from different treadmill to treadmill, at least you're having a uniform source of information between run to run. There is also a way to wear this on your waist, but then when you do that, you get a completely different set of information. You don't get the faster response time on the watch in terms of changes to pace and distance. You don't get like the enhanced GPS tracing. You get other running dynamic stuff like left and right balance information that I think is interesting, but not that I really use all that often. So I personally am not gonna be buying the Pod 2 for that particular use case, but it is something that's available and in there. Overall, I'm not a huge fan and I don't know that I'm gonna be recommending the Pod 2 to a lot of people, but I do absolutely love the Apex 2 and the Apex 2 Pro. I think these are fantastic watches. They look great, they feel great, but they're delivering reliable numbers and excellent mapping. So those are my thoughts on the Coros Apex 2 and the Apex 2 Pro. Let me know in the comments if you have any other questions or better yet, stop by the live stream that I do Monday through Friday right here on YouTube. I'd love to talk to you guys in the chat. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of this video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?